A dispatch rider, for all intensive purposes, is, is about, I should imagine, three up from being a gypsy, uh, one down from being an estate agent. Uh, so we're not loved by anybody at all. Some days it can be good and some days it can be terrible. It can be the worst job in the world, it can be a great job, you know what I mean? There's a lot of freedom. You don't have a uh, foreman or uh, anybody standing over you, you walk from the radio. So you're more or less your own boss, really. It's not purely the money, I mean, you do the job, everybody hates it, but at the same time they love doing it. I know, I just seem to, I, I sort of drifted into it. I think most of us do. It's a thing you start doing, you start doing and you just then don't get away from it. Dispatch riders by nature are all social misfits of some... I don't think anyone's a career dispatch rider. We're all forced into it. Really, just sort of drifted into it. I'd had silly like dead end jobs. And I'd always been on the motorbikes, so I thought I'd make a living out of what I'd, you know, just riding a bike. I was an undertaker you know, before I'd done this. And uh, like every now and again you get a courier come in like brown bread and I was all oh, blimey, that, that looks like it's uh, exciting. I'll have a go at it. My diplomas and uh, qualification are unrecognised in this country. So every moment is the only job I can do. I love motorbikes and uh, it was a novel thing 15 years ago, so I'm still at it. I was a tool maker, but I was made redundant. I was made redundant several times in engineering, so I thought I'd uh, try something different, so I took up dispatch riding. Oh, I'm an electrician by trade. Um, I, was, I was hanging off the back of a bus one day trying to dodge my fare, and uh, I asked uh, one of these bikers you know, what he was doing, and he said, well, I'm a dispatch rider, and I said, do you earn good money? And he said, well, I earn more than you do. Um, and uh, so that afternoon I, I left my job and became a dispatch rider and I've been doing it eight years. general public like us a lot. There's, there's a few of the geezers out here, they get a bit, you know, up on the pavement. And so, like, we've built up a bit of a bad reputation, you know. Usually the antics that people see couriers getting up to aren't that dangerous. When people see a dispatch rider batting through the traffic at about 40 miles an hour, they think, oh, look at that lunatic. What they don't realise is that the rest of the traffic's moving at 30, 35 miles an hour, so you're only going through it at walking pace. See, a lot of what people think about what it's like to be a courier is from the outside looking in, and they, they, they can see bikes constantly whizzing in and out and everything, and they think, God, those blocks are, you know, there's something wrong with those people, oh, that's really dangerous. But in actual fact, you get so used to it, it's not as dangerous as it seems. But most of the people I've met in this job, they're really considerate, uh, considerate road users as well, because when you're out on it all day, you understand what it's like. You understand that everybody can't be driving all the time, like driving aggressively. It's just the people who, who don't understand. You just think, oh, oh, look at that maniac on his bike. Oh, I don't know, or just people who just get the rear lump because like, you've died in front of them. I must get shouted at at least 20 times a day. But the thing is, motorcycles, I feel, can anticipate what's going on in front of them far quicker than most car, car drivers. They can see what's going on. Most car drivers don't look around, they just use their mirrors. Whereas a motorcycle, has got to use his eyes all the time. People only notice you if you, you know, if you're in the way. People wander around this city like, you know, the world doesn't exist outside their own heads. But yeah, if you get in the way, then they think you're sort of scum of the earth. You're very much under pressure all the time, particularly when it's busy, to deliver items at a reasonable time. But the vast majority of us don't. We just do it sensibly. There's no need to really hack it anyway.
recently the most unusual delivery is um, going all the way up to Derbyshire to pick up 20 bags of flour and bring them back to Knightsbridge. I must admit that I picked one of the bags open and had a little taste and it was flour. <laughs> Just a bit of fish, a bit of haddock. Yeah, meeting people outside stations is like, I've had, I had to meet a uh, mysterious looking woman outside King's Cross, that was a laugh. I'm trying to find the right dodgy looking girl. I mean, that is ludicrous. That's costing her like five, six quid just to get a pint of milk. Sometimes you're doing a master video for a company, which is um, like worth sort of 50 grand, and then the next moment you're delivering someone's jumper, which they left at the bar somewhere. I got done for speeding there, and I actually delivered my own documents to the prosecution. To prosecute me, I was like a bit gutted. Really. I took a bomb to uh, the Northern Ireland office. I didn't know it was there, but. It was obviously found out when it got there, it went through all the security systems, but it was, uh, it was quite frightening, really. I had that on most of the day. But you get these people who are just like, got enough money to be like outrageously lazy and just like order a courier from their house to like go and pick up 20 fags. Got to be a turd in a box. Bees. Marlo. Bags of washing. It was a glass of wine uh, last Christmas um, from a wine bar, obviously from a wine bar. Take this glass of wine, two or three blocks uh, to, to somebody in a big bank and present it to them with our with, you know, um, blessings uh, for cash, three and a half quid. Well, needless to say, uh, I drank the wine, kept the glass and uh, I never heard any more about it. Told to go to a place, turned up and he said, yeah, go to this place, bang on his door and shout, answer your telephone. a big bit of artwork, I was, going, I was going through the city with it and it flew out of my bag and got run over by a bloody great lorry and big tyre tracks right across the back of it. <laughs> she picked it up, stuck in my bag, delivered it to the client the right way round. She went, oh thanks, put it down. <laughs> it's a massive lorry tyre track across the back. The cakes, they're the ones, like we used to have a place to deliver cakes and like you have somebody have an accident and still carry on and deliver the parcel. It's just like, it's not a cake man, it's like, metamorphosized back into cake mix. A guy delivered a parcel and on it got photographs do not bend. And he delivered it folded in four and on it got, yes they do. I do remember once losing a package on a, on a rainy day and driving around Victoria until I found what, what resembled a, um, a soggy crisp packet, which was in fact the artwork. And then I, um, and what I did was I took it home with me and dressed it up and then repackaged it and delivered it the next day. Um, but all I can say is that the artist, whoever he was, must have been crap because they never rang back to complain about it. <laughs> so they either used it and won an award or they threw it straight in the bin. Yeah.